Sandhawk's our first real map that Madison developed on its own almost three years ago. There's a lot writing on it. We all worked really hard and loved the hell out of the map. And so to come back and make it as awesome as we know it could be, that was an opportunity we couldn't pass up. The whole team was excited because there were a few pain points. We just needed to file down some of the rough edges, give it a little bit more story, give it a little bit more soul. And then while we're at it, let's just add new locations and make it as awesome as possible. When Madison took on the challenge to remaster Sandhawk, we wanted to see this world 20, 30 years into the future. Totally overgrown, nature's reclaiming it. What was once an amazing, fun summer getaway is now this dangerous, mysterious location. It's paradise lost. When talking about revisiting Sandhawk, there are sore spots that we knew could be improved. We've seen a lot of player feedback, a lot of pro player feedback, and probably most importantly, we relied on our heat map data from hundreds of thousands of games that have been played. Playing with my friends on the original Sandhawk, we always hated crossing the rivers, and the data showed that players died a lot in rivers while they were trying to cross. Crossing a river is quite a bit easier now. We added a lot more bridges. Pulling the rivers in, bringing the force up to the edge of the rivers made it more of a defensible position or a place you can move through quickly. What's new with Pinon is that we have a completely reworked area that has now this multi-tiered parkour style gameplay that's really, really interesting. Do I run across the roofs? Do I hop down and take a different path? Do I try to cross the bridge? Do I try to hide in the water there? In previous Pinon, you were sort of forced to cross on four completely uncovered bridges. Now you can use the roofs, you can use the river, you have so many more options. Ruins, I felt like the design of that area was a bit confusing. It tended to be chaos in the beginning and you would lose a teammate or two. So we said to ourselves, what can we really do to help elevate this look, but then also have a really interesting design? We checked out a lot of real life reference. Angkor Wat is one that people might be familiar with. We wanted to give the ruins just a visual weight that I think we were unable to capture in our first go round. Now the ruins have been reworked to be large, monolithic, maze-like. What's great about ruins is it's very symmetrical. Four major areas supports four squads. They're all starting from the same point. Truly the best squad will win fights in ruins. Central Boot Camp is going to be huge. You've got two loot trucks spawning there. It's totally being redesigned, so players are going to want to learn its secrets. As you work your way underground, you get to learn a little bit about the behind the scenes of the Battlegrounds games. How are these games run? Who are the people that hold these games? And there's a ton of high level gear. I imagine that's going to get a lot of play, a lot of TDM, a lot of high intensity action. Before Quarry was like a bowl, and if you were in the bowl, you were dead. So we provided lots more traversability in terms of ways to get in and out with rope bridges and ways to ramp up and down the different tiers of Quarry. So now there's not just the bottom and the top tier, there's a middle tier and then a tier above that as well. Mountain was problematic because it was a King of the Hill situation. We removed a lot of the sheer cliff faces. We made it a lot easier to traverse up the mountain. You can see there's these zigzagging roads. And you'll also notice that the loot truck will go up there. And then we also made the top of the mountain, the dojo, not as defensible as it used to be. I think once we knew that we were going to remaster the Sandhook map, we wanted to do something that would bring the map alive and add some dynamic gameplay to it. The concept of mobile care package really stuck in our heads. The loot truck, this big, struggly treasure chest on wheels. This is a truck full of confiscated weapons, and it's traveling from boot camp location to boot camp location. We had to create something that would reward people, but also involved enough risk and enough strategy that it could involve other players who maybe hadn't even planned on attacking the loot truck. We needed to balance the health of the truck so that a player couldn't just get a full reward by taking a couple shots with a rifle. 
but we also wanted to make it so that you didn't have to spend every bullet you had in order to get something back. So we definitely tweaked the rewards that pop off the truck based upon how much damage it's taking. In internal play tests, originally people were totally fine just shooting an item off blue truck and then grabbing it. But then as we saw that players were getting more and more familiar with it, greed set in where they said to themselves, oh, well, I can shoot one box off of it. Maybe I can shoot two or three. Now maybe I can shoot more. Maybe now I can actually just follow this thing and destroy it. After we realized this was actually fun and we enjoyed having it, Dave was like, more loot trucks. We need more. Who's driving the loot truck? Well, that's a mystery, and I, uh, I can't give away that answer yet. Doc's wall, really interesting to fight in. Wasn't really seeing a lot of traffic in terms of people wanting to land there. We just took it as an opportunity to try and do something new, try and give our players something different. We wanted to change the feeling of the island from just a random military island to maybe what used to be a vacation destination. It's got it all. Poolside cabanas, old dirty hotels, and a beautiful boardwalk for players to contest. We also have the nightclub area, which kind of serves as like a huge treasure chest building if you can hold it for your team. And so it's difficult to get into it, but it's easy to defend once you're inside. If you go into the bar in the getaway, you got a really cool like vaporwave kind of 80s feel. If you look there, you might see a reference to someone called Lucky Dan. In order to tell the story we wanted to tell about the logistics of this Battlegrounds Island, it made a lot of sense to introduce an airfield. How do supplies arrive? How do participants arrive? And with the airfield, it's kind of a no-brainer to introduce the motor glider. The motor glider really works in harmony with the loot truck. And seeing players kind of attack it from above, throwing grenades out of the motor glider is very fun. Season 8 absolutely has more surprises in store. 8.2 is going to deliver the decoy grenade. We have an amazing machine gun coming. And for 8.3, we have a very situational surprise that could really help you make a play at the end of the game. I definitely hope that players get that feeling that this is still the Sandhawk we know and love, but when they get into it, they feel like it's more of a level playing field. We really put our heart and souls into making this map as cool as possible. We want players to return to Sandhawk and we want them to fall in love again.